That's that's crazy to say. It it's crazy. It's crazy to say. It is. It it's the worst. <laughs> it's the worst snapback possible. God damn it, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to West Side Title Live. If you guys haven't done it yet, like the stream. We're going to be hopping right into uh, <laughs> the Drake and Kendrick beat. My God. At the risk of this being um, out of date, who knows, at any point while I'm talking, uh, there has been probably one of the most if not the most insane rap beef of all time going on this weekend. Uh, you're lucky that you stayed alive to see it. Um, and this is going to be just basically a description of what the fuck is happening for anybody out there who is maybe just a little bit confused about what, what's going on. I'm going to try to give a, uh, a quick uh, minor history lesson. So um, Kendrick Lamar is a Los Angeles rapper right from LA uh he follows in sort of the tradition of Snoop Dogg and Tupac who are massive heroes of him he's like a west coast west coast rapper bringing a lot of like that old school 90s kind of like energy with a really 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 high level of musical talent and production Kendrick Lamar Kendrick Lamar is kind of disputably to a degree but um one of if not like the best rapper alive today that's working um it, it's it's very difficult to provide any argument that he's not to the point where during what has been going on uh it it, it oh, come on come on come on come on petition to play bbl drizzy is background music i can't i'll be swept away by it i will be drowned in it um also i don't know if it'll get contest struck um with all that said Aubrey Drake Graham, whose name, full name, I didn't know until this weekend because I never gave a shit, is a former child actor from Toronto. Uh, he was on Degrassi. I think, I can't remember if it's Degrassi or Degrassi the Next Generation. I don't know. But either way, kind of notoriously, his character gets shot in during the show and he spends a lot of it in a wheelchair. That's as much as I know about Degrassi is that it's a high school show as they used to make back in the day and Drake was on it and Drake got fucking cracked <laughs> fucking wheelchair, um, which is hilarious. And his scenes in that show are fucking funny as stuff or funny as shit. And after the show started winding down or whatever, he became part of uh, young money, cash money, billionaire, whatever uh, YMCMB. Young Money, Cash Money, Billionaires. That's a little bit of a rap group with, and I, I might be fudging some of this, with uh, Nicki Minaj and Lil Wayne, who were making them basically three of the biggest names that were in the game at the time. Um, Nicki Minaj is huge to this day. Lil Wayne was really on top of it when they got together. Um, and he sort of, his profile sort of hyper-launched the both of them into mega stardom. Um, Lil Wayne, not really... In it and on it as much as he was back in the day. Nicki Minaj literally losing her mind um, in real time. But God bless her all the same. And Drake uh, has been on some other shit. Drake is, I guess, notorious throughout the entire industry I've learned as of late. For being as weird in IRL uh, to his co-workers, so to say, in the rap game as he is um, outwardly. I I've got to pick... I so, so, like... Um, there, just to put it in perspective, there's this picture of Drake uh, where he was wearing this fit. And for the longest time, I was just like, I think that this is the stupidest shit I've ever seen. But like, I don't understand anything about black culture that deep. So maybe this is it. Um, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. I, I broke my fucking, I think. So you have like this, whatever this is, right? And so for a while, and like, this is a dead serious... <laughs> look and so he's got a lot of shit where he looks goofy as fuck right this is not i mean can we even just check let's see 
uh, for some Drake fits. Drake, weird fits. Because sometimes Drake dresses normal, and then sometimes Drake is just wearing some, some wild shit. And so I didn't say anything about it, because I'm just like, maybe it's like, uh, I don't know, you know, if I can... Uh, Growing up black type thing that I don't quite get. I never talk. I never, I try to never comment on black people's hair because who the fuck knows what's going on. But I was just like, that's a little strange looking. <laughs> that's just a little strange, just a little strange looking. And then he's just got some, he just got some bizarre fits. I don't know. Sometimes this is old Drake. Um, That's pretty normal looking. Can we get some of the weirder ones? I mean, that's like a Nickelodeon's Choice Awards type deal. The, the teddy bears is very strange. He's getting up to some, this is some <laughs> bad photos, but the, the man's just a little off sometimes. I think this is notorious. It, one of these braid sets that he does, everybody was saying was actually exactly the same as uh, R. Kelly wore back in the day, but I, I digress. He's just always been kind of a, a, a weird dude, which I'm, I'm fine with you. If you're working, you're a weird guy, but I guess he kind of played it off as like his weirdness is kind of like, that's it. Mox is emulating his child's bride's hairstyles. Oh, no. It really is like, I, I swear to God, that hairstyle with the poofy sides looks like, uh, like you're a side character on like the Proud Family. You guys remember the Pride Family? Proud Family, you'd have some like pretty like out there, like little goofy hairstyles or just kind of like uh, cartoony versions of stuff that people would normally wear. It seems like kind of like like that kind of vibe, <laughs> but. Um, Drake's always been a little weird. Drake's also had a lot of controversy, um, around him in a general sense, particularly regarding like hookups and stuff, you know, with him being, you know, there's a little bit about being flirtatious. Obviously I think almost everybody's heard about him and 11 from stranger things, Millie Bobby Brown, uh, have been like, you know, in her DMS and shit, which is just a weird thing to do, you know? Um, talk to a kid that you don't, that this is stranger. <laughs> just, just to start talking to a child. I don't know. I always, if you guys ever see me pause, I'm always trying to like rack my brains for like counter examples to stuff. And that's definitely one of the hardest ones to get. You know, I, I understand maybe trying to like see, you know, a young actress, I guess as like an equal in the industry, but I would still just, I would still just keep it service level, you know, like if I wanted to show like, oh, wow, hi, you're a great actress in that child. Like, just keep that just at her in a post, you know, just stay out of the, stay out of the DMs kind of deal. Maybe just reach out to management. You know, you're big enough. You can just probably talk to her agent like, hey, whoever is repping this person, hit me up. I want to say she was very good. Always, so I always say, always try to do everything out in the open, you know? Just to avoid any sense of impropriety, because, because why the fuck entertain it? <laughs> R. Kelly is in, is inspiration. Yes, um, I don't have enough space to explain some of his literal black people cosplay he be doing. Yes, but I think without I don't want to bring it up because I I, I find uh, minstrel show imagery to be like personally. I know it's offensive. Obviously, it's offensive, but there is something about it that um, freaks out a part of my brain that, like, it activates, like, my flight or fight response. But just understand that Drake has taken pictures of himself in blackface. Um, and, like, uh, you're not supposed to use that word, but it's it's the one word that, like, I was like, you, you should take it slower in the FD signifier video <laughs> with using that. Um, unironically did that word around, like literally like showed off in it. And that became the cover of a diss track that Pusha T released. I can't believe it. Six fucking years ago in 2018, uh, which was the most vicious diss track I had ever heard up until a week ago when, um, Kendrick Lamar released euphoria, right? And euphoria is really, really good. Kendrick Lamar and Drake have all sorts of beef. They're very upset, but Kendrick Lamar is basically was like going to let it go. Kind of. He's just like, I just don't like you. And almost nobody in the industry likes you. People just don't like you in general. What proceeded from that was a like, I'm going to slap you right in your fucking mouth kind of vibe. 
<laughs> and actually, it's before Euphoria. It started with um, Drake took a shot at him in first person shooter, which was it like that? Don't like that. <laughs> Don't like that record. Um, there's some there's some shit released. I just want to get to this weekend. Uh, Euphoria came out last week, which was like a six minute, seven minute, whatever diss track. And then this weekend happened, which was like, Mr. President, another plane has hit the the, the, twin, the twin towers, but like it's Drake and but like it's just incessant. We found out that Euphoria was not a one off. Euphoria was what is probably part of a entire fucking album and literally regardless an actual extended play with the amount of content an actual extended play release it was followed up with a song called uh meet the grams which was am i fucking am i going out of time but like meet the grams was the most insane this track i've ever heard basically um drake tried to fire back with something called family matters where he talks some shit to kendrick it is what it is it was not that great or inspired I could barely remember anything off of it, and I've heard it twice now. Meet the Grams came out literally while he was releasing it. So, like, basically before everybody had a chance to maybe hear that it had come out, listen to Drake's response to Euphoria days after it came out, and then literally a half hour after his Family Matters dropped, fucking Meet the Grams dropped, which is one of the d darkest sounding fucking songs I have ever heard in my life. Um, and I'm an Immortal Technique fan, so I've heard fucking, uh, you know, <laughs> so Billy Jacobson. I, I killed Billy Jacobs. Immortal Technique. Uh, fuck, what the hell is that goddamn song? I don't know. It's a horrible song. Terrifying and very good. This is the darkest shit I've ever heard. Uh, Drake addresses every, or fucking Kendrick addresses every single one of Drake's family members and Drake himself. Uh, and a, as of yet, unannounced 12-year-old daughter uh who may or may not exist and basically says like your dog shit he says his mom like you raised a piece of fucking shit <laughs> you raised a bad person i wish drake was dead him and harvey weinstein can fucking go kill themselves like literally just i fucking hate pedophiles he fucking calls him a pedophile he calls him a bad father he basically offers fatherly advice to drake's kids which in a crazy way, circumnavigates and punch it like the flash running around the world to punch you in the back of the head, knocks out like almost all of Drake's disses against Kendrick. Cause he was just like, you know, you're raising another man's child, like whatever. And Kendrick's based, without even addressing that, it's just like, I would raise another man's child, which is just such a flex. You know what I mean? Like maybe I have to <laughs> like, goddamn. Not enough fathers out there. Um, it was wild. Uh, Meet the Grams was vicious. Euphoria was vicious. Euphoria was like, most people were saying, like, that's, that's a lot. That's too much. Meet the Grams was ridiculous. A day later, he releases another one, which is uh, Not Like Us. And which is a fucking, another response as a whole to all of the shit people have been saying about him. So th these were in the fucking pocket for a while, which is crazy. Because you have to understand that this goes so deep. Almost every inch of the music game, the music production game, is touching this beef at some point and publicly on Kendrick Lamar's side. Not many degrees of separation. The person who, who, who fucking worked on the next track, which is a club banger, dance track which is a response to people saying like oh yeah kendrick's kendrick's got a bunch of disses but uh you can't fucking dance to him because uh basically drake, drake's always trying to call him a nerd like mr pellet's a prize winner uh kendrick opened his mouth give him a grammy that kind of shit <laughs> ridiculous he put out a club banger where he basically calls fucking drake a pedophile and a freaky um ass n-word the entire time calls him a fan which is an acronym for that phrase Pretty crazy shit. Um, un unbelievable. Like, un unprecedented. And even says in one of the songs, uh, actually, in, in Meet the Grams, like, just understand, like, your dad should be trying to kill me right now. Too, too fucking... 
to his son, uh, Adidan or Adonis, whatever, um, literally talking past Drake to his own kid, like, you know, your dad should have killed me when I said shit like this, or at least tried to, and he doesn't have the fucking balls to do it. Like, literally, don't let another man piss down your leg. <laughs> but that also, that just happened to fucking Drake. It, it's psychotic. It's half culminated. It's the current state of things right now is Kendrick has basically suggested in his lyrics, or at least the interpretation that he's going to release additional tracks. So the dude has preloaded a fucking magazine and is unloading into Drizzy into Drake. Um, other people are now releasing shit too. Uh, Kanye apparently has released a song. <laughs> Uh, Metro Booming, as people are posting in chat right now, has released a just diss beat, which is the first time in the history of maybe like that anyone can remember at least that someone has released a diss beat. Uh, Metro Boomin was the guy that produced Euphoria, and Drake mentioned him in the comeback Family Matters, like or, or one of them back then. I can't remember. Was that even further back? It's 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 really difficult to keep all these fucking. It, this is unprecedented. Normally you just talk about one fucking album, but he said, Metro, you know, shut your ass up and, and, and do some drums. And Metro came back and did some fucking drums and made BBL Drizzy, which is like, BBL Drizzy, <laughs> got that BBL jiggling and shaking and said, he's going to give the beat for free to whoever makes the best diss, which has turned the internet into just like, I am going to be making BBL Dizzy Drizzy fucking <laughs> disses from now on. Uh Drake Drake released his last response, what is it, Sunday night, like last night at some point, and it is not good. Uh I'm gonna say that this is not good. <laughs> and I don't even know where to go with that. Um What what was it even called? Uh, fuck the heart part six. Thank you. The heart heart part six was released like last night and it sounds half, half like spurned, pissed off. It's like if somebody was as Drake at his best, which I mean, goddamn, maybe, but like really not putting it out, but unironically kind of feels like Drake saying like, what did I, what did I fucking do to deserve that? Like, can you stop? It feels like him literally saying like, bro, please like what, what in the fuck? What in the fuck are you doing this for? <laughs> and the hard part six is really what I wanted to kind of talk about because it has some crazy, crazy parts in it. I don't want to, I don't want to go through the whole thing. You should just experience this all yourself, uh, in the first person. And especially like seek out Fantano is an absolute monstrous hip hop head. He could fucking probably guide you through it. There's a ton, a ton of people, uh, Black Twitter is a flame, right? <laughs> All of China knows you're here. Uh, I get it because The Heart is a series of songs by Kendrick. Yes. Um, the Heart Part 6 is one of the like saddest and grossest comebacks I've ever seen. Because the entire thing really just feels framed. I guess I will. I'll, I'll look up the lyrics at least a little bit for it. Heart Part 6. A lot of it is framed around like dunking on dunking on Kendrick Lamar for possibly have being molested as a kid after Drake said or after he called Drake a pedophile which is the most ill-informed snapback possible like the most ill-advised snapback maybe that you could do um let me get down here what about the bones we dug up in that excavation and why is whitney in whitney ugh, why is it whitney denying all of the allegations uh why is she following dave free and not mr morale that's him talking about um talking about fucking kendrick's ex like when kendrick's ex has to talk about the rap beef <laughs> You haven't seen the kids in six months. The distance is wild. Dave leaving heart emojis underneath pics of the child. 
Speaking of anything with a child, let's get to that now. The Epstein angle was the shit I expected. TikTok videos you collected and dissected. Instead of being on some direct, disdirect shit, you rather fucking grab your pen and misdirect shit, which, you know. Good job. My mom came over today and I was like, mother, I, mother, I, mother. Ah, uh, wait a second. That's the one record where you said, you say you got molested. Oh, fuck me. I just made the whole connection. This about to get so depressing. This is trauma from your own confessions. This is when your father leave you home alone with no protection, so neglected. That's why these pedophile raps is shit you so obsessed with. It's so excessive. <laughs> Which, I mean, it goes on. It goes on for a bit. It goes on for a bit. We can get to some of the other parts for it. But I gotta say, um, that that's not that's not a dunk. <laughs> There's a lot of shit. There's a lot of shit. It, it's not even like it's not it within fair play. It's just not even a shot that you can take to say like, yeah, well, you got molested. Like you, that is, that is the, that is like the bottom tier of like 4chan blood sports level fucking drags. And from what I understand, if you look into the lyrics, he says, I literally wasn't, but they blamed my cousin for doing it uh, against my wishes. That isn't crazy. It, it, it's crazy. So like, like, cause first off, yes, but also if I'm really worried about pedophiles to the point where like, I thought you were one cause I was molested when I was a kid, you shouldn't be the one saying that. <laughs> you just shouldn't, you shouldn't say, oh, you keep calling me a pedophile. What are you afraid of pedophiles? Cause you got molested. Like that's crazy. That's, that's crazy to say. It, it's crazy. It's crazy to say. It is. It, it's the worst. <laughs> it's the worst snapback possible. Like, it's, it is. It's half the fucking, half of the hard part of the rap too. Like that's half of like his whole thing is that like, it was just a shot, a shot. Above this too, also, um, and everyone loves this one because it's the same thing. Let's see. Oh, it's a little bit further up. My bad. I don't know. So I, I got to read through this. If someone else gets this, I don't know if it, here, Drake. Let me see. Okay, I'm just double checking with Genius, and even Genius is like, uh, there's not much to say about this shit. So, I'm a war general, seasoned in preparation. My jacket is covered in metal, metal, medals, honor, and decoration. Not great. Uh, not great. Not great. Not a great, not a great line. Uh, <laughs> I thought there might be something like a little bit deeper than this, but... Also, like, so the thing is, is, uh, if you're accused of using ghostwriters and stuff, saying that you're the head of an army in a beef is kind of like, kind of like, like crazy. Like, I know maybe he, he's talking about my, my Montreal connect stand up, not fall down. The ones that you're getting your stories from, they all clowns. <laughs> when I say it, when I read it, dude. I so I'm, I'm fucking dude. That that is I'm delivering these fucking lyrics with extra mayo on the side. I'm telling you that much. But like, first off, Montreal ain't in America, and this is a beef that is centralized at the heart of the recording industry in fucking Los Angeles, where he's from. Like home turf, home turf. You're like I, who gives a fuck? You got connects in Montreal, okay? <laughs> Sick, dude. Oh, not the Montreal Mafia. I mean, I guess they're probably pretty serious, but, like, this is America, bro. <laughs> Are you going to come down to fucking LVC? All right. Uh, anybody seen that Kendrick Lamar fella? I tell you what, I see that Kendrick Lamar fella. He's going to uh, he's gonna get two barrels out of my old fucking pump shotgunner here. I came all the way down from Montreal, Quebec. I came down here from Montreal, Quebec to put a, to put an end to this for uh <laughs> I'm just doing Chicago. 
to put an end to this for uh, for for my boy Drizzy, my boy Aubrey. I'm I'm coming down here. I'm gonna put a stop to it. I ain't gonna. I'm not gonna. I, I got two duck guns, and I tell you what, I'm not gonna have it. <laughs> Dude, what is some dude just walking around fucking Montreal with Timberlands and a fucking lumberjack jacket? You know? Walking around in fucking plaid like, all right, now. Yeah, any of you had seen that little fella, Kendrick Lamar, you better send him on out here because your old fuck Montreal Pete's got something hot for him. <laughs> hey, I, I, I'm out here. The, the, the streets of Montreal are ready to run for you, the Aubrey. We're we're out here. I know him by first name, Aubrey. If we if we we, we see that little Kendrick Lamar fellas out here, I tell you what, oh he he's he's gonna get it. I got half the hockey team out here with me. They're ready. We're gonna find him. <laughs> he's a short guy. I laid some maple syrup down on the ground. It's gonna get stuck like one of them glue traps. I, I normally don't use those because those aren't humane. As a Canadian, I I stand against the use of glue traps. But that that Kendrick Lamar, I'll tell you what. He needs, oh boy, when I get down there to, when I get down there to California, I'll tell you what, I'll go to the LBC where that old Snoop D-O-double G has been hanging out and I'm going to pull out my nines, K-9s, K-9s on me, that's a nine millimeter pistol, mine's semi-automatic, uh, I got to use a, a six gun because I'm from Canada and they don't let us have the magazines, they're concerned for our safety up there in old Canada's. So I'll be down there with my with with my click action pistol, and I'll tell you what he's he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna rue the day he fucked with Audrey Graham. That's right, buddy. <laughs> I got connections in Porto Alegre. <laughs> they sound like XQC. Oh fuck, I can't. <laughs> Kendrick just walking down the street. He's just walking through Venice Beach with his kids. He just hears a bunch of <laughs> Oh no, it's the people of Montreal. <laughs> Gets on a skateboard. There's just a bunch of like cracked out ultra skinny fucking blondes just <laughs> running down the street with fucking hockey sticks. Stop this slander of Canadians. Okay. <laughs> oh man but either way <laughs> cha, 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 cha. Mm. to be fair they would have a chicago accent <laughs> fair enough if you don't want to be slandered stop sending us your word citizens <laughs> Dude, the most notable, the most notable and outspoken Canadians recently have, in my chat that I have talked about, have been XQC, Keffels, and Drake. Which, that's not my fault, Canada. It's not my fault. <laughs> I love you guys. I love Calgary. Calgary slaps. I've been to Calgary. I've been to Banff. I've been on your big ass mountains. All right, I fell in your snow drifts. I see the most. <laughs> Toronto is just sideways Chicago. Oh, no. <laughs> anyway, he says, uh, you waited for this moment overcome with the desperation. <laughs> After the daughter, the Drake is insinuating that Kendrick Lamar is currently desperate to put out anything he can to discredit him, and he's already dropped multiple tracks back to back. I don't think, like, there's nothing that smacks of desperate with, with Kendrick. Kendrick just sounds like he fucking hates he fucking, he fucking hates, um, Drake. Just, he just fucking hates him. There's also, this is a little bit me talking out of pocket. All right. Go, go look up other, like, like other actual black creators for this. Uh, but if you're white and you've never heard of this, um, uh, sort of issue, black is a thing in America that it is not other places. All right. And black is a thing other places that it's not in America. But American blackness has been exported at a rate that exceeds black people's ability to control their own image and American black people's ability to control their own image and like the narratives around them, like completely. So like 
American blackness is one of our biggest fucking exports. It's a crazy, like, sociological thing. It's gnarly. The extra double, triple crazy thing about that is, is that there's people around the world, uh, sometimes white and sometimes otherwise, that will appropriate American blackness from other cultures in ways that is sometimes just flat out fucking offensive, just like crazy, like, you know. What, what no understanding of the culture what the fuck is this but especially among certain anglo countries looking at you canada and britain the there's there's black populations in those countries that like will fucking talk out of both sides of their mouth about american black people um sometimes treating american black people like they're not really an american in a way that like is not a way that they want to be talked about like like that's not your conversation to have like I, I am an American and, you know, like we worked real hard for that kind of shit, but also associating that American culturelessness with black people in America. So like saying like oh, American Americans don't have any culture. And then you'll see black people saying that in a different country while wearing like fucking FUBU and Nike. You know what I mean? Like, like just, fu- just dressed up, like literally like a two thousands imitation of like what we all sort of kind of saw on TV 20 years down the line. It's a thing that you should look into a lot more. If you're from outside of America, this might be a thing. And it's not necessarily like you're 100% a bad person for engaging in it. But it's one of those, like, imagine just running into a doppelganger or seeing doppelgangers of yourself that are kind of, like, appropriating your culture but still sort of, like, look like you. And so you can't use the normal. Or so it's like, you know, if it's a fucking white guy, you're just like, hey, fucking, yo, like, literally cut it out, mayo. What in the fuck are you doing? Like, stop doing this fucking Malibu's Most Wanted shit. But then other times you have it so it's like a black person from another country appropriating your culture because they're not fucking American. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't, you kind of can't start doing like, you know, like the way that fucking uh, Louisiana culture, Nolan's fucking Louisiana, black culture is it's a very specific thing to Nolan's fucking Louisiana. When you're down there, that's that shit. It's not the same as like L.A. And it's not the same as New York. It goes all the way. It's all around. You know, same fucking white people, all crazy fucking types of different types of shit. Same with black people. But like people, specifically Drake, Drake has fucking appropriated a lot of black culture across the world that's not his. Because like when Kendrick Lamar talks to you, Kendrick Lamar is LA. Like he is, you can go to where Kendrick Lamar is from, talk to like a hundred people and be like, this is the through line that made this man. Okay, fuck. But when you see, and especially I guess if you're black and you know a lot more and you have a deeper connection, like a closer connection, it's like watching a you being puppeted around doing slightly off shit that's like unsettling to people. It's like, what in the fuck is this monstrosity? And he's done it to more and more cultures. Like he's he's absorbed drill is like the most notable thing because he's not even fucking from... <laughs> In England, but like he's absorbed these little things and done like pastiches that were still disrespectful, and some of it comes from him lying about his ghostwriters. So it's like, you know, anyone else is like, oh yeah, this is like my serious shit. This is what we went through. This is kind of how we write, how we talk about it, and then he'll just take that shit. Um, notoriously, he took like almost the entirety of like one of the weekend's albums just like out from him because he was a bigger person at the label, and just like I like that song, I like that song, I like that song, and then just. He's got it, which is why one of the reasons that fucking Drake is so big and has so many hits is the guy's kind of an unrepentant and like unstoppable thief. Because it's also a very difficult thing to articulate, especially to white people, to be like, "Hey, this is this is very difficult to describe, but that shit's fuck that shit's not okay," <laughs> you know. And it took literally like Kendrick Lamar to come out and say it, and fucking finally like stop. Well, I mean, actually, it took Pusha T and a bunch of other people, but, like, Kendrick Lamar is kind of, he got the head shot off, and just, he's like, he, he knew, he knew he was dealing with a zombie, so he's just fucking gonna keep fucking shooting, I guess, until it's done. Thanks for handling this respectfully, Tyler. Uh, no problem. Thank you, that shit enraged the hell out of me when I was in college and outside of the country. Uh, it's so weird when certain types of creators talk about the black population as a big collective with one culture, when that's not how it works. I hardly know shit about African culture. Yeah, it's a diaspora. Diaspora. I can't ever say that word, right? So people are people are people everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Um, and there is such a thing as cultural appropriation. I usually don't like 
even trying to jump into that conversation because it can be extremely sensitive for people. And that literal conversation was hijacked by bad actors 10, 12 years ago. And it's just a complete confusion of what is and isn't okay. So you have people like, if you wear a Chinese style, like evening dress, you know, to a prom, like that's, that's like the worst thing ever, but that's not, that's not what it is. But actually what Drake does is kind of perfectly, perfectly an example of it because he literally does appropriate cultures from places that he's not in order to sell uh, a, a corporate version of blackness to white people very, for very, very lucratively uh, to his own ends. And at times fucking over black people, uh, black artists who, who need more of a help up because he's from a nice family. He's like upper middle class, whatever. He got to act as a kid kind of thing. And he's, you know, jumping over, stepping over, stealing from people that are from like where Kendrick Lamar grew up and people like that he knows. And he's like, well, fuck, dude, like you, you can't do that. <laughs> you know, like it's just, they, there's just no part of this where you're doing the right thing and you got to like, you got to cut it out. I think people have been telling him he needed to cut it out for a long time and he didn't. And that shit, that shit was fucking raw. Like, and so now you have this. So if you're ever just curious and this is, that's one thing, minor thing. Technically, in the grand scope of the gigantic fucking uh, diagram of issues, that's just one of the many parts. Not, not any less important, but like, if you're understanding why this shit is so fucking like aggressive and relentless and why it's so widespread somehow, as opposed to most rap beefs are like, two guys, sort of the people around them, and then it kind of quells out. This is like, a lot of heat from a whole gigantic section of the American creative industry. It's cause he fucking bought it, dude. He fucking bought it. Um, big time. He grew a lot of seeds and <laughs> he's reaping the whirlwind to say the least. <laughs> Drake literally ruined. I love McConan's career for a song. Completely took his shit and ripped him off completely. If you're curious, find me in the discord. If for me or for anyone, but yeah, you guys can, you guys, yeah, talk to Jim. Literally learn more about this from other people. I'm just trying to give you a fucking like an intro. I do have to finish this, this little bit of a setup though. Also, if you want to have any conversations about this, we are doing call-ins on Thursday. I've only got like an hour left, so I've got to kind of wrap this up. I might not even get to the FD signifier thing. I should probably just hop into it, but either way. Yeah. Yeah. Let's just, let's just see. I want to see what, uh, FD's IDs are about this. Because he did come out with a thing where he was just like, oh, no, not Drake. Um, and, and apparently this, this video is like crazy uh, off. And I'm interested in it. This is, this is a fucking... Also, how the fuck does he get... Does he... Does he have like a UMG credit? Or is there something that like richer, like bigger fucking uh, creators on YouTube can get so they can just have the music? Because maybe that is the... Is that on the YouTube music thing? Maybe I need to buy that. Cause he's just putting some shit in these anime. This is a this is a Greek tragedy, and we are at the end of the story where everybody's dead. Everything they say about me is true. Man, what just happened? What just happened? What just happened, y'all? I don't even know where to start. To be honest, I'm kind of at a loss for words. So at I'm gonna say 11:30 ish tonight. Uh, Drake responded to Kendrick with a song called Family Matters or Family Ties. I can't even remember the name of the song already. Family Matters. And Family Same. Matters is, uh, and, you know, y'all know I'm biased. Y'all know how I feel about Drake. So take this with all the grains of salt. I wasn't overly impressed. It's seven minutes long. Um, four, like four and a half minutes are really addressing Kendrick. Then he spends three minutes in the middle talking to ASAP Rocky again and Rick Ross and other people who... I really should have never been involved. And I made this comment elsewhere that once they got involved, I knew Drake was going to respond because it gave them, him an angle and kind of a, a easier battle to fight. He made Kendrick has been dropping all claims on people's videos on his disses. <laughs> oh, I didn't know it was everybody. I thought it was just the one dude. That's some, awesome. Some startling accusations. And I'm trying to, I'm going to be, I'm trying to be very unbiased here. And also this will circle back around. Drake accuses uh, Kendrick's child, one of his children of, of not being his own. He accuses Kendrick of not giving back to his community despite uh, you know, always talking to all that pro-black shit. Um, he then, toward the end, accuses Drake of continuing to cheat on his wife and possibly his wife. Um, and so those are, you know, 
greatly serious accusations. The challenge is receipts. I don't, I'm, I'm not aware of any, any, uh, receipts toward this stuff, serious accusations, but like, there's like a, what's the word I want to use here? And I'm trying to, this is, this is my, as unbiased as I can analysis before everything else. My, my thought was, okay, the problem with euphoria versus family matters or family ties, uh, remind me in the chat, which one it is, is that we know so much about Drake because Drake wants to be famous. It's not hard. We, we, every, like everything, <laughs> everything they say about me is true. Fuck. He planned this shit. Oh my God. He planned this from the beginning. He planned this from the beginning. Anyway, because we know so much about Drake, even if Kendrick is exaggerating, even maybe Drake didn't get liposuction. You know, that's a rumor. We don't have no evidence for that. Maybe Drake's been a good father since he was exposed by a push of tea. We're not in that man's household in his personal life. He may be a great father. The boy seems to love him. But we're getting to my point. We know so much about Drake that as Kendrick talked about, like literally the, the talking point for a lot of Drake fans. From what I gather, FD is a Drake hater, as one should be. Ends was that what is Kendrick going to say that to Can't me? Can't wait for the two presidents so Sunday streams covering Kendrick and Lamar. To like question you for it. I don't know if you so we get to family it. ties. You kind of have to ask yourself, okay, what do we know about Kendrick? We don't know a lot. He's very private. He could be a complete monster. That's something I was thinking about. Like, man, Drake might have some dirt that changes the, our whole perspective on Kendrick. And I got to start looking at Kendrick. I got to look at a lot of my faves. Right. And that still may be the case, right? You know, if, if we learn that Kendrick has been doing his wife, like sadly, a lot of other rappers have, have done their wives in the past. It does change the way we look at, look at Kendrick. But <clears throat> within the confines of, of rap beef, rap battle beef, et cetera, for me, it was, I, I want to say, it was either gossip, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. And, you know, I'm like, okay, if receipts come, that changes our, 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 the, the discussion around it. And that's where I left off thinking about K Kendrick versus Drake at like 11.45, 11.50. I was saying, best case scenario, Kendrick, and from my biased opinion, my biased opinion, best case scenario, Kendrick edges Drake in this situation. And then... Kendrick drops the meet the grams 30 minutes after 1150 and meet the grams is, uh, it's, it's heavy. And again, it, it, it works into a problem. Now I'm going to give the same just in, for the, in the, in the sense of a rap battle, I'm going to give the same, uh, rubric. Oh, there we go. I hit the, the wrong the button, drink, which is, we don't know how much of what Kendrick accuses Drake of is true. So here's what, here's what Kendrick accuses Drake of in, uh, meet the grounds. Um, he accuses the two major, the two major things are he accuses Drake of being at a minimum, a, uh, what's, what's, what's the best word to use here? Cause he never called Drake a Pedialyte drinker. He said he does have Pedialyte drinkers in his crew. He says Drake keep, has his children around. Got yeah, somebody hit him up. FT just never has to be a friend of me. That's fine. We just tell him the best way to call it five terabyte enjoyers. Say he's got five terabyte enjoyers in um, his crew. Uh, defenders. Um, he implies heavily that Drake is a predator. That's I think that's the, that's the best way I'll put it. Predator, groomer, pest, etc. Nymphomaniac, enabler, etc. And and if you go watch my Drake video, I've never given a ton of credence to the conversations and rumors and theories about Drake being all of those things. I've always been of the mind to say Drake is such a try hard, want to be liked by everyone, egomaniac, that he will do sus questionable shit for the sake of being seen and clout. But that lends itself to a critique to say you are a, a predator, right? And, and the way he went in on it is he saying it's heavy because the thing is he saying that Drake is the destiny of hip hop? <laughs> I think I said, I think I've been saying from jump. I don't know how much I've said it the um, in actual content, uh, but I said that Kendrick Lamar is not necessarily the best lyricist, but he's the greatest. I'll song tell you what, him. you've never seen Vosh and Drake in the same room. I'll say it again. You've never seen Vosh and Drake in the same room. I'll say it one more time. You have never seen Vosh and Drake in the same room history of hip hop. Like in terms of thinking through everything about a song, nobody's better than Kendrick Lamar. 
Kendrick Lamar doesn't just make songs, he makes features. You see his songs. And so if when you're I didn't want to listen to it again. Just like there's certain songs on on like I don't listen to like um Father uh Daddy Issues or Father Time or Mr. Morale because it's too heart wrenching. Right? I don't I listen to that. uh Mama I'm sorry. What is it, Mama? Whatever the last song going on, on Mr. Morale. I can't remember the name of it right now. I've only listened to that like twice. Because I can't it's to too be much. fair, I've never seen watching anyone in the same room. It was hard to listen to in an affecting way. It's an amazing piece of art. And so the next thing he does after accusing Drake of being a child is accuse Drake of having a second secret child that is 11, um, 11 year old daughter. And the thought of that is pretty horrifying um, for the obvious well known reasons if you've been paying attention. And then he goes on in the last verse to read Drake for filth. This can get violent now. And it's like, so to, to end the, the, the more simple uh, who won part, I don't think you can reasonably say Drake won. Um, even, if all, even if both of them are lying through their teeth, which part of me just hopes is true, right? That's the best case scenario is that both these niggas just lie through their teeth for, hip, for, for, um, for battle rap clout, you know, then, then, Kendrick. I understand. I, I can understand why people have a problem with that statement, but also like the dude's a father. Like I get it. Like I would very much rather find out. I would rather Kendrick. I would rather Kendrick. I think Kendrick Lamar would agree with me. I would rather he lose a rap battle and a kid never have been hurt. You know what I mean? Than than the opposite to have been true, which is. I think I, th I think that's a fair statement. I think I, th I think I get where he's coming from. Just the the, the chess move. Oh, I forgot. And so then. So the other the other parts of the story is last oh, night Drake was supposed to drop and he chickened out at the and the, well and then it's like oh it didn't happen it wasn't happening that was a rumor right um and then by the morning we had another Kendrick diss and in that diss Kendrick is basically telling Drake hey I got I got the drop on you and I knew this from jump the cover of six sixteen in Toronto is a picture and it's a picture of a Maybach glove. And I immediately say, oh, he's sending Drake a message that I know something. I have people that are close to you. So 616 in Toronto is the second. I would have never known that's a Maybach glove because I don't make anywhere near enough money to understand what the fuck that is. <laughs> this track that Kendrick releases this morning. I think that's just a suspicious looking glove. I'll just tell you, that's a villain's, that's a villain's handwear. That's just, that's real shit. You that you can only buy that. They they make this specifically out of only like the babiest of baby seal skins. Like they, they like you have to watch them kill the animal so that you can be authorized to wear this. What fucking Maybach glove? <laughs> I thought they just made crystals, bro. I'm why did they, why where did they get in the leather? And in that Gooner track, glove, the cover is this <laughs> image. It's a picture of a Maybach driving glove. And on top of what looks like a shirt, um, you can kind of decipher a piece of paper next to it, um, so on and so forth, right? Uh, and I immediately see that and say, oh, this is Kendrick letting Drake know he genuinely does have someone inside of his house, uh, inside of his camp that is feeding him stuff. This is a warning. And he says in that song, have you ever considered that people in OVO are working for me? You got people next to you that want to do you in, they're hustling, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then what Drake releases tonight has this image on it. I haven't actually taken a chance to look at this. Somebody said this was Prozac. He meant, he meant know, to, so it's, it's literal. He meant to say, uh, he meant to say Kendrick. Receipts. And it just hit me, there's, it's more over here. It's like a piece of plastic on the, the sleeve. So God, it may be fucking more. So for the, it, like for the basic battle, there's no, this is not, this is not a, this is, this is a win for Kendrick. I don't think anybody can say that unbiasedly. When you, when you preempt your enemy's attack and then also respond immediately, all this talk about, oh, where you at? It's been two weeks. It's been three weeks. Even though Drake took longer to respond than Kendrick, Drake to respond after three days and Kendrick to respond in 30 minutes. Yeah. The, uh, the prescription that's crazy at the bottom, it's not Prozac, it's Ozempic, which is... 
kind of an unethical way of losing weight right now because it's actually a, if I believe it correctly, it's a diabetes prescription that you can abuse as a non-diabetic to lose a fuckload of weight real quick. But now it's starting to come around where people are like, just anybody can use Ozempic if, if they need to. But it's currently like the celebrity weight loss thing. Um, and it apparently makes you fucking shit your weight out so fast that it's kind of like almost a little bit deleterious because you can start getting like bag fat. You start looking at like a lot of people that are on Ozempic that were like heavy, they lose weight so quickly. And I think in a certain type of way, I'm not exactly sure, but basically they look like Luffy after he uses gear five for too long. And they're just. And 12 hours before. It's a type two diabetic medication. That's a wrap. That's a wrap. It gives you IBS for I real? I didn't realize that. I didn't know it made you shit. I, would, I say that. I just say that about like losing weight fast. I hope it's a wrap. I hope it's over. <laughs> I don't want any more. I don't want any more. Maybach used to make engines for Panzers in World War II. Oh, my <laughs> God. But the, the spotlight on, uh, <laughs> on Drake right now is not what I wanted. I wanted Drake to be defeated on the analysis of his culture vulture, vapid music, clout chasing. This is Dracula. <laughs> Some people say they got flow. I'm on Ozempic. I'll make you shit yourself. <laughs> they must have memory loss because they forgot that I'm him. Boy, I wiggle past the limit, or you can call me a fucking tapeworm. That that's for that's only for that's only for fucking, <laughs> fucking tragic mulatto nonsense people. status. That is what I wanted. I wanted Euphoria. I wanted someone Euphoria. I love to death, partly because I feel like I co-wrote that motherfucker. Shit ain't that nothing was, to I me, man. Me. I didn't feel family ties in part because it didn't do much except for you know give out rumors that. <laughs> dude the coldest thing here is fucking uh fd just absolutely brutalizing i the same dude same you guys i, I love that i covered fd on this because i feel i feel so fucking forgiven it is impossible to keep track of all these things one right after another and a bunch of them like repeat themselves so you have to be like scholarly about it but also the fucking drake releases and he's he's two releases back when he released this still they're so fucking milk toast and dog shit. It's almost impossible to remember anything anything about them except for the criticism, because fucking Kendrick set it up. He he set him up, so he's only gonna look bad. He's only gonna look bad when he releases because Kendrick's music's probably been fucking done. It's probably been fucking finished for like who knows months while he was prepping all this. And like oh, now it's time. <laughs> Just getting it, dude. <laughs> in in the moment, you're inclined to not think are, are you know, true. To hear Meet the Grams was like being in the house of like your best friend or like somebody you cool with and like watching their family unravel. So the best case scenario, this was just an amazing chess move the most amazing chess move in the history of battle rap, of, of rap battles or rap beefs ever. Worst case scenario, uh, this is going to lead to an ugly unfurling of a lot of ugly, dark things that we've been ignoring about hip hop for a while. Because if what Kendrick is saying is true, right? Then the biggest- I gotta say, I know, I think it's just a misstatement of how he said that, but I think it would probably be good I think I think it would probably be good for this to just fucking blow the entire hip hop game apart because it it's kind of felt like that from the outside looking in for a while now. I mean, I don't think I don't think anybody can disagree with me that it has been like you know, 50 Cent does just not have the he just doesn't have the fucking the oomph. 50 Cent doesn't have the oomph to be a Cat Williams. <laughs> but 50's been telling us the whole time, man, I tell you what, man, fucking I can't do a good 50 cent. I love that motherfucker though. Ja Rule came to me and he's just a little fucking guy. Have you guys, have I ever told you guys about 50 cents autobiography? Like get rich or 
I try and I think is actually what it's called. <laughs> it's also the name of an album. He talks shit about Ja Rule on there and it's fucking cold as shit. Uh, amazing. But 50 Cent has been out about everything. 50 Cent won't give a fuck. He's been talking about Puff Daddy for years. He was talking about all this crazy shit. He does not give a shit. They shot him nine times. He didn't die. He's like, I can, I can take at least a 10th, you know? Uh, but the world can't rest on, on, on Fiddy's back. Other people have to do it. I think this shit's going to be, I think it's going to be crazy. And I think that's for the best because then you start seeing like, cause it doesn't end with Drake. It's, it's about really about, and what people have been saying, God, who was that? I think that was, that was Kanye. You know, when you, when fu- Kanye has to be on the right side of an issue, you know, some shit is getting fucking twisted up, but he was saying, you know, Drake's got a, uh, a sugar daddy. Basically, Drake's got a $400 million sugar daddy. And that is like the, the head guy at fucking UMG, whoever the fuck that is. Um, obviously, it's probably a Jewish person if fucking if Kanye is complaining about him. Um, but like, basically, the insinuation is Drake and anybody else that makes these places like this big money, that big fucking money. They let you just run crazy. They let you run fucking crazy. Cat Williams. Cat Williams was talking shit about the Puff Daddy parties. Or the Puff Daddy parties. Puff Daddy. Yeah, he's Puff Daddy. What the fuck am I talking about? Uh, Back in the early mid-2000s. I can't remember what the fuck they were called. But like the Freak Nicks or whatever. Uh, And he's got a whole bit on it. He's like, you have a bit one of those. I I finally got to go to the Hollywood parties. I was walking around looking in the rooms. (laughs) Seeing things that weren't meant to be seen. (laughs) God. Cat Williams, bro. Lord. Kanye has been right about a lot of things, but wronger about everything else. I know it's basically like anything he says about the music industry. I kind of like believe all the stuff he says about Jewish people. I ignore. (laughs) It tends to work out pretty well. Um, but goddamn, at a certain level, they actually enable the behavior. Yeah. Rapper. We need a modern version of the Def Jam games. Those would be fucking fire. Has been an open predator in our faces and we've ignored it. Right? And that's and 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 that's not like that's not a small thing to be revealed as true. You know what I'm saying? It's not just Drake needs to go if that's the case. Just like with R. Kelly. There's a Wikipedia article already. Did he pull one up and I just ignored it? Wait, where? I, I was looking at Genius. I was looking at the song lyrics earlier. If that's it. Uh, wait. Did I? Did I look at a Wikipedia article today? I can't so remember. So many people will have to be implicated in something like that. Yeah. Uh, fucking W. Big dubs. Big dubs. 100%. Um, no notes, really, that I can think of. Uh, from FD Signifier. Good take. Good take, buddy. Um, right there. There you go. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, notable, notable music enjoyer. FD, <laughs> FD Signifier. I was surprised. What a, what a good. I, I'm so glad. I thought he was a fucking Drake head. I was like, oh, what's going to happen here? Uh, good that it didn't happen. Kanye is like the average white ring populist who realizes society has a lot of problems, but bereft of knowledge on the causes of those problems, their only solution is a Holocaust too. True. I thought that was the name of the 50 cent video game. Get rich or die trying. That is the name of, that is literally the name of 50 cent. Everything. I think that's the name of his company. Uh, hold on, hold on. 50 cent. Uh, this is, this is going to be a wiki walk real quick organization. Oh yeah. It's G unit. Organize the G Unity Foundation. Television, 50 Central, 50 Cent, the money and the power for life, power, the oath. What all this dude want to do is talk power for hours. Get Rich or Die and Trying is his song, and I think Candy Shop. Ah, how many? Let's just see how many. Get Rich. (laughs) <laughs> get rich or has 17 turnups so yeah jackson first started in the semi-autobiographical film get rich or die trying in 2005 rolling stone ranked get rich and into club is blah, blah, blah. mainstream breakthrough okay so that's the song that's the album that's the song i like that even this in september 2007 50 cent released his third album curtis which i have never heard a fucking single song on 
I, I don't think I didn't even know that that song that that album existed, which was inspired by his life before Get Rich or Die Trying. It sold behind Kanye West's graduation, released the same day. Well, there you go. He recorded 20 songs to a whole different con- album concept before putting them aside. Wanting his new album to have the aggression of Get Rich or Die Trying. That fucking album just dominates his life. <laughs> uh, film, Get Rich or Die Trying 2005. Oh, where's the fucking video game? The video game didn't pop up, but it is just mentioned over and over again. It is, like, I mean, goddamn. Somebody, I think, I- I'm going to give credit to Jun. I think in chat, I think like a month or so ago, June was just like, yeah, 50 cent had everything handed to him. Like, like miraculously just like was the biggest fucking thing on earth for that time. And then vanished. The game is called bulletproof. Ah, thanks for guys. Thank you all for constantly putting up with the fact that I'm like, I am wrong about shit, (laughs) but don't worry. You can be, you, you also, I, if I can be wrong, and I can be slightly off base in chat. You guys also can be wrong and slightly off base in chat. But just don't come in with it like the guy on the fucking Twitter that or Twitch that I just had a ban with a, a a clearly made today fucking uh name that was about like shooting somebody to death and then say Drake was good at rap fucking talking about how you're on drugs right now. That that will get you banned, unfortunately. Maybe someday. Maybe someday. 50, 50 was smart, get your bag, then do what you want. 100%. I'll tell you this. I, I don't know if I've ever, I've ever told you guys this is my, like, I'm not supposed to say this, but I'll say it anyway, because I, I, this is my test in my mind that I, I have. You can, you, can, you can do what you want with this. This is Tyler being completely inappropriate. I always, I've heard a thousand times in my life, because I grew up mostly in the 2000s, when the, uh, well, if they can say the word, why can't we say it? Like, discourse was really hot. You know, that's like the era where the, then say it, go ahead, say the word like that era. (laughs) I grew up during that era. And so I've heard a million like arguments about saying that word specifically. And in my mind, I came up with the test, um, of whether or not you can say it. And it's, if you can say it and it sounds as natural and flowing as when 50 cent challenges, um, Floyd money Mayweather to a reading competition and says, I don't even think you could read a single page of a Harry Potter book. And he says the word, if you can't say, and it doesn't sound as like natural, do it alone. It doesn't sound as natural and flowing and like real that you shouldn't say it ever. Never say it. This is not for you. Don't do it. But if you get, that's probably it. I probably watched that clip. Anytime I need to cheer up, I'll play it. I'll just play it. Why am I saying it? It's one of my favorite clips of all time. Why are you there? Um, I don't know why, but it's just, I die about, I die thinking about it. Woke up. I look at the computer. The computer say, Floyd said, fuck T.I., fuck Nelly, fuck 50. I'm like, what do you say? It's not this for? Nelly fucked your first baby mama, Melissa, then took your fucking fiance. Say, fuck that nigga. This is a special A-S-L-E-L-S challenge for you, Floyd. If you can read one full page of a Harry Potter book, nigga, I'll give 750,000 to whatever charitable organization you want to. Fuck the bucket of ice, man. A phone call from. I've never heard somebody obliterated that hard in my life. Like he's been in so many boxing competitions, but to just read one page of a Harry Potter book. <laughs> if you, if so, some people know that Fifty Cent got shot, but if you don't know why Fifty Cent got shot, you haven't seen him talk enough because the man goes, <laughs> "Fuck the bucket ice." <laughs> I just never heard somebody rip that hard. It's just impossible. It's I can't have that. I can't ever have that. And that's fine because I get to see it happen sometimes. He just fuck just. Uh, <laughs> what do you fucking say? To that? <laughs> what can you do but read the book? <laughs> he says it. He hits it so hard. I retroactively in my mind started trying to figure out if I've ever seen Floyd Mayweather read in my life. <laughs> But like 50 Cent hits that line so hard. He made me believe, truly believe that Floyd Mayweather might actually be like legitimately illiterate. I'm like, I don't know. Maybe he is. <laughs> Fuck the Buckeyes. 
from my man Jimmy Kimmel. Jimmy said if Floyd accepts the challenge, then he'll put it on the actual show. So you can read it on the show. We don't want to put pressure on you. We know you can't pronounce those words in that Harry Potter book, so we're gonna let you read Cat in the Hat. It's it's the it's the the rhythm on Harry Potter book. <laughs> Harry Potter book. <laughs> I fucking love fucking 50 Cent. Dude. 50 Cent, 50 Cent's music is all right. 50 Cent's shit talking is legendary and more people need to hear about it. I, 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 I don't know if I'll get in trouble. Hold on. Let me, I don't, I don't care. I'll, I'll risk it. I'll risk it. Look at that. Four rows in his that is. <laughs> Dude, to be to have 50 cent as an enemy would be crazy. <laughs> He's so fucking happy with Not himself. <laughs> He fucking said it was a savings. <laughs> he said I saw a deal. <laughs> Have you ever been on a Groupon? You know what I mean? And you're like, I'm going to fuck somebody's night up. Like that is, you, you can't aspire to that level of like petty. You, you, you can't even hope for that. Cause if you, if you're not born into it, like if it has, if you haven't arrived there yet, you're never going to get there. 50 Cent is perfect. <laughs> I fucking love that man. I love it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, didn't him and Eminem have beef? I don't think so. Uh, Eminem, like, Eminem put 50 on. Like, they're, they're, they're from the same, like, that's, I mean, he could. You can have beef with everybody. I think he probably had beef with Jay-Z. Because Jay-Z had beef with Nas, and I think, I think fucking 50 Cent was like, let me in on that. And everyone went, don't worry. Don't worry about that. <laughs> oh my God. You think you got to buy four, get one free. That's crazy. The funniest part isn't even the funniest part. Like if you don't, if you're not like reading between the lines, the funniest part isn't like fucking over like the fourth, fourth, first four rows of his concert It's going on fucking national television to talk about how cheap it is to get a, a seat at a Charo show. <laughs> he said, when the the hit the hit isn't anything up until he says what about three thousand dollars? <laughs> you know, wasn't even that much of a flex. <laughs> God damn! Oh fuck! I love that shit. I love it. Speaking of being petty, let's uh let let let's switch over. Let's switch over. It's talk about Voosh video. We, we, we got to do this. This is probably going to be late. Shout out Osu Osu, as always. Do, do, doing overtime. Doing, doing, doing overtime over here. Oh, my God. Fuck, I needed that. I, I just, I love it. Sometimes I laugh at stuff for so long in private, and I don't share it that I'm like, is this actually fucking funny to everybody else? And I get nervous when I share it with you guys. Like, I hope you don't think I'm being an asshole or something. <laughs> You know, Harry Potter book. <laughs> this is the stupidest shit in the fucking world. Like, why did he think of Harry Potter? And why is Harry Potter the funniest fucking book to mention? Later on, he said Cat in the Hat. If he would have started with Cat in the Hat, it would have been, it wouldn't have hit as hard as Harry Potter book. <laughs> but he said Harry Potter book, like. I think it's the insinuation. I can't remember. My uh, fucking um, Floyd Mayweather has to have kids. I'm I'm pretty sure. But just the funniest part about 
ha- like sending like 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 Floyd Mayweather's gonna have to be like, go get me a Harry Potter book. And then they're going to say, which one? And he's going to give a fuck which Harry Potter book. Go bring me one. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah, it, it, it's funny because it's not that high of a reading level. But it's also not too low. But just there's just a bunch, you know. <laughs> I like the thought of Fifty Cent having uh, Harry Potter books like on hand, because just reputation wise, you would not associate him with like Harry Potter. You know, it's just two different worlds. Like especially when I was growing up, but like everybody's read those fucking books. There's no reason he hasn't. But <laughs> it's pretty funny. Actually, that's, that's a great picture because they came out while he was like on top of things you know doing like reading up like hanging upside down and shit and like absolutely jacked the thought of like curtis 50 cent jackson uh, which i always say because i saw him i can't remember what fucking movie it was but he it, it says his name like that it was when he was trying to like transition from 50 cent into like acting and now my mind is permanently like stuck i get so excited whenever i see curtis 50 cent jackson it makes it's like i love it it reminds me of being young it's nostalgia which is fascism uh, <laughs> with the thought of him in his maxed out hyper jacked in the g unit era but it's like between shots like and so he's sitting in his like little folding chair which is like like harry potter and the goblet of fire open on his lap it's just like a perfect it's just a perfect image Everybody's walking around the set with like fake guns and props and stuff. And he's like, Hey man, did you see this part? Like, yeah, yeah. I read that like two days ago. That shit's fucking awesome. He's like, fuck it. I like this shit. <laughs> just 50 cents. This is one of the people on set is just like, Oh, you reading that? He goes, no spoilers. <laughs> Get ready. Now none of you ever better tell me how the Harry Potter book ends. I got my place. Don't touch that. I fucking love it dude oh man i wish his acting career i wish he would have went funny i wish he would have went funny so bad but for some reason they wanted him to go into like drama like it, maybe it was his thing it pushed him towards like drama and like fucking stupid gang shit you know fucking traditional like bullshit fuck man if he would have done some like acting lessons and became a comedy guy you know he could have been like i th- he would have been way funnier than fucking ice cube is ice cube basically did that you know what i mean like you guys don't you might not be you're like what are you talking about what is just friday like no 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 you don't know about you don't know about deep cut ice cube being in fucking family comedy movies <laughs> you never seen the ice cube movie where he's got to fix his house and he's mad because he doesn't hire a contractor and hires some like scubas to do the whole thing for him just walk around 50 fucking ice cube the entire time fucking mad as fuck Man, why are these pipes busted? <laughs> Shit, dude. <laughs> just, it's just because he's Ice Cube, so he just has to Ice Cube around all the time. So he's always doing that, like, man, what the fuck? <laughs> it's a fucking family comedy. Dad, our house is big as shit. It fucking is trash. I know. <laughs> I'm getting sucked out. Ice Cube getting like sucked out the fucking window because his like leg gets caught in an extension cord. And the moral of the story at the end, if you guys remember this movie, the moral of the story at the end is just hire a contractor that knows what they're doing. And it made me feel like that was a real... Oh, no, my pillow. <laughs> it makes me feel like that was like... You know... You just gotta, you just gotta write what you know. It's just like when you wrote Friday, and it's like your old neighborhood. And he's like, yeah, but now I'm like, I'm like massively wealthy. Like, dude, I'm like a billionaire. And they're like, well, you know, write what you know. <laughs> it's like the, it's just nice to see like the struggle that he goes from like you know like the hood shit to just the the struggles, man. The struggles of of, of trying to like negotiate the size of your house with uh, post purchase renovations. <laughs> Oh, okay. No, she, I just panicked. I was like, no, that's Ice Cube. Uh, Tyler's talking about the sequel. There's a sequel? That's a sequel movie? Oh, no. 
Uh, are we there yet? Is the ghost? Oh my god, are we done yet? Is that it? Actually, is a sequel movie. God damn. You know what's another good one? You know what's one of the the best? Like fucking, why did they make this movie? Is the uh, the Road Hogs film? It's like the last Tim Allen movie that he ever fucking made, where he was like around other famous people, and it was just about all their old men. They're just all old as fuck, but they have a little motorcycle gang. And I think, I think Cedric the Entertainer is one of them. And I think Martin Short is one. And then one's Tim Allen. And then there's a fourth one. I can't fucking remember. And they're just old men. <laughs> it's the joke. They're all rich old guys that are in a fucking motorcycle group together. It's like, I know you're writing specifically. This is some some fucking out of touch dipshits real life. I love it. Wild hogs. <laughs> I was gonna guess that that's what the name of it is, but it sounded too stupid. Oh my god. Oh my god. Sharp, sharp, sharp. What did Sharp say? Ice Cube was in Tank Girl as an anthropomorphic kangaroo. Remember that? Somebody said that's Ice T. I believe that that's Ice-T without even having to double check. Because Ice-T is just everywhere, man. Ice-T is like... Ice-T is kind of like to random movie cameos as Snoop Dogg is to like random song features. Like, you just see Ice-T here and there. Places. Like, where, where the fuck... Where the fuck did you come from? He's just like, I'm here, buddy. Like, okay. How the fuck is Ice-T here? I still remember... Thinking that I was having a fever dream and I was like, it was about to be a joke at any point when I like came back from a deployment or something and Ice-T was a cop. <clears throat> I was like, what in the fuck? What, when the fuck is happening here? Why is Ice-T a police officer? <laughs> he was. I was like, is this a trick? He's on like SVU or whatever. He's been on there for a billion seasons now, but I tell you once upon a time, it was the first episodes and like that was one of the only things that was always on the, the, the military TV were police procedurals for whatever fucking reason. And I remember like him showing up and I was like, are we going to find out that he's like, I was like, what's the fucking twist going to be where we find out that he's not, how are we going to find out that he's not a cop? The twist was he was a cop the whole time. I was like, what the fuck is going on? That's a trait. That's a crazy change up. You got to understand. Drake, the only motherfucker that can't get a Snoop feature and has to use AI, which is like, I said that last week, that's the craziest shit. That's the craziest shit. That like, that you just can't get Snoop. Like, he has to, Manic he has to, he, he fucking has to hate him. Has to hate him. But then that put it in, uh, put it in my mind where I'm just like, I don't think I've ever heard a Drake, Drake Snoop Dogg mix, which is crazy to be that big crazy to be that big and you've never done shit with snoop dogg and then i think the only reason drake ever worked with like eminem was because they were maybe on like a nikki track together and then if you start thinking about it like harder and harder you're like man fucking drake doesn't fucking work with anybody you know like you're like what the f like 21 savage like who gives a fuck like <laughs> I have a phone. I don't know why. 21. Did you just hear what, what Kendrick said about me? Oh uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Get your finest pack of crayons and get in the studio right now. We're writing him back immediately. <laughs> Everyone hates Drake, dude. It is true. Oh my God. Hope you enjoyed your time on the west side. Don't forget to 